In the digital age, data is everywhere. We all leave a data footprint wherever we go online, but with so much data it's sometimes tricky to get your head around how it's collected and why it's collected, given the vast quantities of it. That's where Databricks comes in, one of the market leaders when it comes to data services. But what is the story of Databricks and how have they reached a $28 billion valuation? Here's how it happened. First of all, we have to answer the question what is Databricks? Well, Databricks is a San Francisco headquartered data and AI company founded by Ali Godsey in 2013, who was one of the original creators of Apache Spark, Delta Lake, and MLflow. Built on a lake house architecture in the cloud, which combines the best elements of data lakes and data warehouses, delivering data management and performance typically found in data warehouses with the low cost flexible object stores offered by data lakes. They might seem like a boring business that deals with data, and they even suggest they handle the boring AI needs for their clients. But they're trusted by over 5,000 businesses around the world, some of which are huge institutions like Shell, HSBC, T-Mobile, Microsoft and Amazon among others, who rely on Databricks to help with data engineering, science, machine learning, and analytics to help data teams solve incredibly difficult problems. Essentially, Databricks helps clients store, clean, and visualize vast amounts of data from disparate sources. Some examples include finance firms analyzing satellite data to understand where to invest money. Or Shell even used Databricks to monitor sensor data from 200 million valves to predict ahead of time if any will break. There are limitless uses for the software. The business was started in 2013 by the team of engineers who launched Apache Spark from the University of California, Berkeley, alongside one of the computer science professors there, Dave Patterson. Apache Spark is described as a lightning-fast unified analytics engine for big data and machine learning, and it has quickly become the largest open-source community in big data, with over a thousand contributors from 250 organizations. It's 100% open source, hosted at the vendor-independent Apache Software Foundation. Apache Spark therefore laid the foundation upon which Databricks was built. When they first set up, Godsey and the team estimated they might be able to sell their business one day for a few hundred million dollars, far underestimating themselves. They were also often told that their idea wouldn't take off because people believed that the cloud wouldn't work, that you'd need an on-prem or on-premise solution with some companies investing billions into data centers. But their bold stand, which included turning down $20 million to build an on-prem version of their software, has seen the company rise to become a giant today. They make their money through a model they call software as a service open source. They offer a free open source version of Databricks, but their software as a service offering has more features that would interest business clients like reliability, scalability, and availability, with everything being on the cloud. Whilst their free version saw them grow like a B2C company, Databricks really needed to target business customers who were more reluctant when it came to paying for the service. Why pay when you can get something great for free? So they had to take a step back and think, what can we remove from the free version that keeps it functional and useful? And what can we include in our paid version to make it good enough that people won't mind paying for it? And customers have now been paying for it freely. So much so that Databricks have surpassed annual recurring revenues of $425 million, which has attracted a lot of attention from investors, and have raised over $1 billion in hard cash, which values the business at over $28 billion, with investments from Franklin Templeton, Fidelity, CPPIB, BlackRock, Alphabet, and T. Rowe Price, among others. After an oversubscribed funding round, Godsey suggested that he's always left some valuation on the table after each funding round because it's a long-term game after all. The goal for the business isn't just to get to IPO, but to be around for a long time in a gigantic market in which they've only just scratched the surface. The team is so ambitious that sometimes they're keen to abandon yesterday's work because today's innovative idea might be even more successful. It's seen them partner closely with Microsoft, which helps the tech giant pass lots of data quickly. And Databricks are now an industry leader when it comes to cloud-based data engineering, and yet few people have heard of them. Perhaps with IPO fever around the corner, 
the public will soon know who Databricks are and understand the importance of businesses like Databricks, especially as technology continues to improve. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.